Jagger and Richards in June 1972 at Winterland in San Francisco Jagger Richards is the songwriting partnership of Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. A musical collaboration whose output has produced the majority of the catalogue of the Rolling Stones. They are one of the most successful songwriting partnerships in history. In addition to Jagger and Richards' songwriting partnership, they have also produced or co-produced numerous Rolling Stones albums under the pseudonym The Glimmer Twins. Similar to contemporary songwriting partnership of John Lennon and Paul McCartney, both Jagger and Richards write lyrics and music. Jagger and Richards performing with Brian Jones and the Rolling Stones in 1967 Jagger and Richards have different recollections about their first songwriting endeavors but both credit manager Andrew Lou Goldham as the catalyst for their collaboration. Richards agrees that it was Oldham who pressed the pair to write songs after the duo had first emphasized other people's material. Oldham noted that there weren't that many obscure great songs out there for the band to cover. Richards recalled, so what Andrew Oldham did was lock us up in the kitchen for a night and say, don't come out without a song. We sat around and came up with as tears go by. It was unlike most Rolling Stones material, but that's what happens when you write songs, you immediately fly to some other realm. The weird thing is that Andrew found Marianne faithful at the same time, bunged it to her and it was a fucking hit for her, we were songwriters already. But it took the rest of that year to dare to write anything for the Stones. Jagger remembered it differently, Keith likes to tell the story about the kitchen, God bless him. I think Andrew may have said something at some point along the lines of I should lock you in a room until you've written a song and in that way he did mentally lock us in a room, but he didn't literally lock us in. One of the first songs we came out with was that tune for George Bean, the very memorable It Should Be You. Jagger and Richards performing with the Rolling Stones in Stockholm, Sweden during the No Filter Tour in 2017 according to John Lennon. He and Paul McCartney might have been instrumental in inspiring Jagger and Richards to start writing their own material. In 1963 Lennon and McCartney gave the Stones one of their compositions, I Wanna Be Your Man. In a Playboy interview in 1980, Lennon recalled, we were taken down to meet them at the club where they were playing in Richmond by Brian Epstein and some other guy. They wanted a song and we went to see what kind of stuff they did. Mick and Keith heard we had an unfinished song, Paul just had this bit and we needed another verse or something. We sort of played it roughly to them and they said, yeah, okay, that's our style. But it was only really a lick, so Paul and I went off in the corner of the room and finished the song off while they were all still sitting there talking. We came back, and that's how Mick and Keith got inspired to write, because, Jesus, look at that. They just went in the corner and wrote it and came back. You know, right in front of their eyes we did it. So we gave it to them. The first original Jagger slash Richard song to be released as the A-side of a Rolling Stones single was Tell Me, from their debut album. Released as a single in the US only, peaked at number 24 on the charts there. The earlier Good Times, Bad Times had been released as the B-side to their cover of Bobby and Shirley Womack's It's All Over Now. The band's first UK single featuring an A-side Jagger slash Richards original was The Last Time, released in February 1965, it went to number 1 in the UK and number 9 in the US. Although most Jagger slash Richards compositions have been collaborations. Some of the songs credited to the famous partnership have been solo songwriting from either Jagger, whose examples include Sympathy for the Devil and Brown Sugar, or Richards, whose examples include Happy, Ruby Tuesday, and Little T and A. This is comparable to the Lennon MC Cartney partnership, who also adhered to a tradition of joint credits even on numbers that were written by just one of the pair. Mick Jagger stated in his comprehensive 1995 interview with Jan Wenner of Rolling Stone magazine I think in the end it all balances out. On June 26, 2013. The duo's songwriting credits were handed over to BMG, marking the first time they would be managed by an outside company in over 40 years. Jagger and Richards have shared credits with very few others. Among them are, Jagger Richards compositions that have been released only by artists other than the Rolling Stones include, Jagger and Richards. Adopted the nickname the Glimmer Twins after a vacation cruise they took to Brazil in December 1968-January 1969 with their then-girlfriends. Marianne Faithful and Anita Pollenberg. An older English couple on the ship kept asking Richards and Jagger who they were. When they refused to reveal their identities, the woman reportedly kept asking, just give us a glimmer, which amused Jagger and Richards. Jagger and Richards began to produce the Stones albums under the pseudonym The Glimmer Twins starting with its only rock and roll. 
The Glimmer Twins were the sole credited producers for the band's studio and live albums from then, up to and including Still Life. Starting with Undercover, the Glimmer Twins have shared production credit for the Rolling Stones albums with other producers, most frequently Don Was and Chris Kimsey. Besides their production work for the Rolling Stones, Jagger and Richards also used the Glimmer Twins for their co-production credit on Peter Tosh's album Bush Doctor, released in 1978. A rare exception to Jagger and Richards' use of the Glimmer Twins' name for production credits appeared on John Phillips' Pay, Pack and Follow album. Recorded 1973-1979 and released in 2001, for which Jagger and Richards were credited as producers under their own names. The partnership of Jagger and Richards has been described by Rolling Stone as the sixth greatest songwriter of all time. Rolling Stone considers the duo to have defined a rock song's essential components and established a blueprint for future rockers to follow. Thanks for watching.